Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, this is Doris Sorrell at Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries in Sacramento, California. And I am so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. I just really, I, I, I like the Pentecostals. I could flip right now, but I'm going I'm to hold my peace in it and teach this word of God. But I'm excited about Jesus. Oh, my God. This is the Christmas season. Yeah. <laughs> And he is the reason for the season. Hallelujah. So we just enjoyed uh, our praise and worship to him. And he has touched us with his glory. Today, the teaching is on the growth and development of Christians. And we are today in the maturity part. We will take the mature Christian in a two-part series today and next Sunday. And then on Christmas, which is on a Sunday this year, we will dedicate to the birth of Jesus Christ. So we've been going through this series uh, for quite a while now, but uh, it is really time to grow up. And the thing that I want you all to understand is today you're gonna get a look at the mature Christians. We already have seen that there are five stages of uh, the growth and development of Christians, five stages. I want to make sure I get that cross in there. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I guess I ain't over far enough. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Five stages of the growth and development of Christians. It starts with a newborn baby. Once you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, you hear the gospel, you hear the good news, and you confess that Jesus is Lord and you receive him as your Lord and Savior, then you enter into the kingdom of God as a newborn baby, knowing nothing about the spiritual realm. God gives you the faith and the grace to believe. And then the growth process starts. But first, you must be born again as a newborn baby. And it doesn't matter if you have a PhD or uh, highly educated or how much you know with your natural mind. You don't know anything about the spiritual realm. That has been that was shut off from, from man at the garden. And God revealed himself through Jesus Christ. He made a way for us to come back to him, to know him, and to receive eternal life through Jesus Christ. So you come, once you confess that, and uh, you believe that and confess it, you enter into the kingdom of God as a newborn baby. There's five stages. Then you go on as a little child, and you learn about God. The, the newborn baby desires the sincere milk of the word. The first thing that happens to you is love. You feel this love in your heart. And then you feel a desire to know God. And so he feeds you with the word. So you desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And then you go on to develop into a child, just like the same stages of the growth and development of a natural human being. You don't remain a baby. You should not remain a baby. You should go on to the next stage as a little child. As a little child, you're under tutors and governors so that they can guide you into the ways of God. And they are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers that God has anointed so that you may grow up. He anointed them to teach you and uh, tutor you till you grow up into a mature person. The next stage is called carnal Christian. A carnal Christian is like the rebellious teenage in the natural human growth and development. A carnal Christian is nothing but a child, just a child, still a, a baby, not a baby, but still a young Christian that has gotten a little bit of knowledge and thinks they know more than the apostle, prof, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, the person that people that God has sent over them. No different than uh, a, a natural uh, 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 teenagers 
they get a little bit of knowledge and uh, they get with their, their friends and, and, and peer pressure get on. And now they know more than their mother and father. Well, we know what that spells. That spells disaster. <laughs> and so the cardinal Christian, when, when pride wells up in them and they feel like they know more than the teachers and the, and, and the people that God has set over them, they are headed for disaster. And they end up in the pig pen. They end up hitting their head time and time and time again until finally uh, they get enough of that and come to their senses and comes home and they grow into the next stage, the, the stage of the young man. The Bible tells the young man that you are strong because you have overcome the wicked one. So the young man understands that the enemy, the devil is their enemy. When the carnal Christians are out there dancing with the devil. <laughs> and I'm kind of laughing at it, but you know, uh, it, it's, it's just what it is. And every Christian goes through these stages, by the way. And so the young man is really getting it together. He is learning how to overcome the devil, the world, and the flesh, learning how to do that, fighting his flesh, subduing his flesh, bringing it under subjection. Amen. Because those that are in the flesh cannot please God. The carnal Christian, the uh, young man has finally left that carnal stage where they were trying to please themselves and other people into knowing that they can only please God. The best thing that you can do is to please God and get in his will and stay in his will. Then today, we're going to the mature stage. Those who are of full age. Now, the really good, now all of that is good news. Amen. But the really good news is that each and every one of us is been, has been predestined to reach this stage that you're going to see today. So today you're going to be looking at your destiny. Amen. And as usual, we are going to have a PowerPoint uh, presentation and I will be on the PowerPoint and off the PowerPoint as we go. So we'll go to that now and look at this uh, stage. Uh, uh, growth and development, that of the mature Christian. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so this is entitled uh, The Mature Sons of God, The Fully Manifested Sons of God. That's the entitle, uh, title of this lesson. Growth and development of born again Christians, the final stage, uh, full age maturity. The Bible says that strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen. See, we live in a, a generation today where it's hard to tell the difference between good and evil. Many Christians don't know the difference between good and evil. But the young man learned and the uh, mature person, those that are of full age, uh, by reason of use, which means they have spent some time uh, with God, uh, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And that is the stage that we are predestined to become. We are predestined, that means that's our destiny, to become a fully manifested, mature son of God. By son, I mean child of God. Amen. Here in, we see in John 1 and 12, the Bible says, but as many as received him, meaning Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Power to become the fully manifested, that's what that means, sons of God. Many Christians don't reach this stage, but they have the power 
to become it. It just depends on how much you submit to your father. The Bible says the whole creation is groaning, waiting on us to grow up. Isn't that something? Romans 8, 18 through 22 says, we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, just waiting on the sons of God to grow up. Let's go and look at Romans 8. I want you to see something. When we were first created by God, we're going to Romans 8, 18. When we were first created by God, God created us in his image and in his likeness to reflect his glory. Well, since the fall, we have fallen very, very short of reflecting the glory of God. The Bible says all have sin and come short of the glory of God. But since Jesus Christ came and gave us the way to become, to, to in, in other words, to return back to becoming the sons of God, which reflect the glory of God, uh, since he came, uh, we, the whole creation is groaning and waiting on us to grow up. Because we come in as, a ba as baby Christians and many Christians remain babies. Many Christians remain young child and uh, uh, carnal. But your destiny is to grow up and all creation is waiting on us. So uh, Romans 8, 18 says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in who? In us. For the earnest expectation of the creature, that means all creation, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. All creation is waiting on us to show up. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. What this means in verse 20, the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly. All this destruction that you see going on, all the hurricanes, the tornadoes, the volcanoes, all this stuff that you're seeing, all of this uh, is a, comes from the curse of sin. And Adam is the one that brought sin on us. The earth did nothing. The earth was innocent, but Adam brought it in on uh, the earth. And that's why it says the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, in pain. And what is they groaning and waiting on? It's just like a woman in labor about to give birth. The closer you get to about to give birth, the worse it hurts. That's why there's a lot of suffering going on. I mean, it really hurts right there at that moment. And then the moment you give birth, whoo, relief. Whoo, the baby's, and it's a miracle. I, I have one mother in the house and I'm a mother. It is a miracle the way the pain, as soon as that child is born, the pain is just gone. Like there never was no pain. And then all you got is a joy of a little child in your hand. Well, the whole creation is waiting on us just like that to grow up because they're gonna be delivered. When we grow up and take our rightful place, this is your destiny that you're looking at. So look at verse uh, uh, 21. Uh, so Adam brought it in, that, uh, that uh, uh, defilement of sin upon us, and Jesus came and took it away and gave us power to become the newly matured manifested sons of God. So verse 21, well, let's read 20 one more time. For the creature was made subject to vanity or emptiness, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself, come at all creation, also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, which Adam brought on the world, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. So all creation is just waiting on us to grow 
up. God never intended for us to remain a baby, a child, a carnal Christian, or even a young man. And again, last, when I taught on the young man, yeah, that's a good place to be. At least you come to your senses and know what time it is. But God has predestined us all to mature. Amen. So all creation is waiting on us to grow up. First, you must be born again. You got to enter into the kingdom of God. That's where it starts. Then you must grow up through the process of sanctification and submission. That's how we are changed. You have to submit to God and his ways. We just had a wonderful song in, uh, uh, in our praise and worship, show me your ways. And so God delights in showing us his ways because he has predestined us to grow up. Well, we are all being changed. Each and every one of you on Zoom, each and every one of us in house and uh, many, many, many of you who are watching on YouTube uh, have, are different, you Christians, have grown up from last year this time. You cannot stay the same because the process of sanctification and your submission causes you to change back into the image and where you glorify your creator and no longer glorify the devil. That, that's that's place to shout right there. Amen. The Bible said we are all being changed from glory to glory. Where? Back to the original image of God that glorified God. All of us are being changed from glory to glory. Uh, there's a song to say, I may not be where I want to be, but I ain't where I used to be. <laughs> Amen. That's because if you love God in any kind of way, if you are seeking God in any kind of way, when you show up Sunday morning at church, when you come to Bible study, when you open up your Bible, when you pray, when you worship, when you obey God, you are being changed. And God is taking you from glory to glory until you reflect the glory of God in your life. Hallelujah. This is your destiny. The new birth gives man the opportunity to return to reflecting the image and glory of God. The Bible in 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. How? even as by the spirit of the Lord. It's a process. The Holy Spirit does it, but we have to submit. We have to submit. You can stay a baby, but you're fighting your destiny. You can stay a child, but you're fighting your destiny. You can stay carnal, but you're fighting your destiny. The young man stopped fighting his destiny. And the Bible, that's why he said, you are strong and you have overcome the wicked one who tries to keep you a baby, a child and carnal. But that young man, uh, is strong, he's overcome, and he's on his way to being the fully manifested son of God. And it says, uh, we will be changed into the same image. What same image? Look up at the right, the left hand for you probably on the screen in Genesis 2, 26 to 28. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. God blessed them. As God's masterpiece, man should reflect the glory of his creator. God, we are God's I, he, we are God's crowning achievement, and we should reflect the glory of his creator. But when Adam brought sin in, we no longer reflected the glory of God. We, uh, the Bible says, uh, we have all come short, short of the glory of God. And so our image was more reflecting sin, 
reflecting Satan, reflecting the flesh, all kinds, and even Christians today. Many Christians do not reflect the glory of God, but it is your destiny if you're born again, but you have to grow up. Amen. So the new birth, again, gives man the opportunity. Remember, Jesus said he gave them the power, as many as believed on him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. Now, when he was said he gave them the power to become the sons of God, that didn't mean you wasn't a son of God as a little baby or as a child or even as a carnal Christian. But he's talking about a mature son of God. We have the power, the ability through submission to the Holy Spirit who is working with us, bringing us from glory to glory, from faith to faith. We're going, so we're not the same. We won't be the same next year as we are today. We will actually be more mature. So look at your destiny. It's a wonderful destiny when you enter into the, the kingdom of God. So we have a lot to be looking forward to. No Christian, no born again Christian. Y'all do see that I qualify that. Born again Christian should ever be bored. Amen. Never. There's so much wonderful things that God is doing in us and so many things he wants to do through us. We should never as Christians be bored at all. Look at 2 Corinthians 3.18 again. But we all, how many of us? All with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. The Lord is glorious. His glory is magnificent. And we are changed into the same image of Christ from glory to glory. That means growth. Even as by who? By the spirit of the Lord. Now, this is a thing that God does. But we submit to him and let him have his way because we are destined. Don't fight your own destiny. If you are a born again Christian, you have been predestined by God to mature and live by the fruit of the spirit of God, which reflects the glory of God. Jesus said in John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained, on that word means predestined, and ordained you or predestined you that you should bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Now, many Christians, I've heard many Christians teach that those fruit are people. And I'm telling you right now, by the spirit of God, that God revealed to me that those fruit are the fruit that you find in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. It is love and joy and peace and long suffering, which is the ability to put up with mess and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance, which is self-control. Those things reflect the image and glory of God. That's why Jesus said, your fruit should remain. Amen. You are predestined to live for those fruit to be manifesting out of you as a mature Christian. This is your destiny. It, it's even, see, the, the young man is, is understanding this. Amen. And he's working on it. But you are, know you are mature when you no matter what happens around you, your fruit remain. It, and it's the fruit of the spirit. Hallelujah. Look at Ephesians 2.10 right there. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained. Again, there's that word ordained, which means predestined. What? That you should walk in them. We are predestined to walk in love and joy and peace, and long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and faith, and meekness, and temperance, which is self-control. That's your destiny. I would be running trying to get to my destiny. I mean, we go on, the world is sending us through a lot. <laughs> now, ordained means 
destined, preordained by an authority. What authority ordained us? God, our creator, gave us our destiny. You know where it says that he knows the plans that he had for you? Plans for a future and a hope? Your future is that of a mature Christian. Hallelujah. It's time to shout on that one. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing that God has planned for us. Through sanctification by the spirit of God, the mature son of God has overcome his three enemies. Amen. The mature person has learned to respond only to the spirit of God, to God's word, and not to the flesh. Lord, that's the mature. See, that's your, that's your future. Woo, that's it. That's how you respond. See, right now, the, the, child, the baby is responding one way to uh, uh, the flesh, the, the child, the card of Christian, and the young man is fighting it. But the mature person has learned only to respond to the spirit of God, to his word, and not to the flesh. Isaiah 26, here's how the, where the mind of the mature Christian is. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Ooh, Lord, see, I'm gonna have to shout on that one. Hallelujah. My mind is stayed on Jesus because we trust in him. We trust God. The mature Christian has learned to trust God. Hallelujah. Romans 8 and 12 says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. We, in other words, we don't owe the flesh that thing. We overcome the devil, the world, and the flesh. And look at this. Let me come off the PowerPoint just one second. I'm going to come off here just for one second. I love that scripture in uh, Romans. We don't owe the flesh anything. Romans 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. But let me give you a little bit of something that the Holy Spirit gave me. Not just your flesh, but any man's flesh. Do you know that there are people out there operating in their flesh? Amen. You don't owe any man's flesh anything. God said, oh, no man, anything but to love him. That's all. Your flesh, I don't owe your flesh nothing. So I've overcome my flesh, and guess what else? As a mature Christian, I've also overcome your flesh. Ooh, glory to God. I hope y'all get a hold of your future because the flesh does not bother the mature Christian, no matter who flesh it is. Because see, they, they ain't already mortified their own flesh. <laughs> and all the mature Christians going to do when the flesh rises up in their face, it's going to pray for them. Hallelujah. Oh, I love maturity. I love my destiny. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going back to the PowerPoint. Praise God, hallelujah. Oh, God is good all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's see, where are we? Let me go down here. Romans, where were we? Ah, glory to God, glory to God. I believe we was there, current slide. Yeah, we went beyond that one. Amen. Okay. The hallmark. Let me make sure I did that one before there. Yeah, we did that one. Okay. So here we are. The hallmark of maturity is what you do when you are faced with temptations, tests, trials, afflictions, offenses, persecutions, reproaches and revilings. In other words, does your fruit reflect the image of Christ when you are tried? We already know what James says. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse or different kinds of temptations, tests, and trials. Let's go and look at that in James 1, 2 through 4. 
James 1. This is your destiny. This is your destiny. You are destined to live by the fruit of God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Your fruit should remain at all times. James 1, 2 through 4. It says here in James 1, 2 through 4, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into different temptation, tests, and trial. Oh, Lord. So somebody said, oh, I can't count it joy when they test me and try me. Well, that's because you're not mature. You haven't read your destiny. <laughs> but you will get there because God has predestined you to walk in the, the fruit of the spirit. So count it all joy. So you're looking at your future if you're not mature yet. When you fall into different kinds of temptation, tests, and trial, knowing, see, you got to know something, this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be what? Perfect and entire. That means mature, whole, W-H-O-L-E, wanting nothing. Let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect. We, we got people talking, you can't be perfect, but the Bible says your destiny is to be perfect. And that word perfect just simply means mature. Hallelujah. And the entire meaning Whole, holy, holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, H-O-L-Y. We got a lot of holy Christians that are not mature. They holy one second and in the flesh the next. Whole, praising God out of one side of their mouth and cursing men out the other. That's not maturity. But uh, see that right there is part of you growing up, but that's not your destiny. That's a carnal Christian. You know, we ought not to. Praise God out one side of our mouth and curse the brethren out of the other side. Amen. It's time for us to grow up. The whole creation is groaning, waiting on us to grow up. Amen. Hallelujah. So perfect and entire wanting nothing means whole and mature. And if you're having trouble, let's go to Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Look how Jesus did it. Look out and, and, and look at that scripture where it says, uh, count it all joy. Look up there at Galatians. That's one of the fruit of the spirit. Count it all joy. That, see, the fruit of the spirit is not your natural human uh, uh, emotion. It comes from spending time with God, reading his word, worshiping him, coming to church, learning about him. Then that fruit just naturally grows in due time. The fruit ain't gonna grow if you ain't sold no word, if you ain't spent no time, if you ain't watched the word. Oh my God. Hallelujah. So let's go to Hebrews 12. So count it all joy because see, we know what time it is. Amen. It's supernatural joy, a uh, fruit of the spirit. Now in Hebrews 12, uh, one and two, can I ask one of the saints in the house to read that please? Hebrews 12, one through three, please. Which one are you saying? And now it's going to read that. Okay. Hebrews 12, 1 through, 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing he is a great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which do it so easily beset us, and let us run with faith and pray that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Oh, Lord. You know, in this evil world, you're going to have some temptations, tests, trials, afflictions, offenses, persecutions, reproaches, and reviling. What you going to do with it? How you going to act? Are you going to revile back? <laughs> you going to persecute back? You going to defend yourself 
uh uh no count it all joy as a fruit of the spirit count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations tests and trials knowing that that is testing your faith it's the testing of your faith and faith when you allow patience to uh, to have its perfect way will make you whole and mature perfect entire wanting nothing nothing missing huh sister nona and nothing broken that's what the mature person has nothing missing and nothing broken Ooh. hallelujah oh now let's look here look unto jesus if you want to know how it's done he shows you right there in hebrews 12 wherefore see we also are are accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses see the uh carnal christian or the child or the baby think they the only one going through something oh woe is me po me pity party pity 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 no look it's a great cloud of witnesses we all going through the same temptation tests and trials affliction persecution reproaches and revival we're all going through it but God is taking you from glory to glory and faith to faith if you submit to God and understand what's going on. This process of growing up, labor pains, growing up. We are having growth pains, amen. But you're going to grow up and get through it and submit to God, submit to his ways. So it's a great cloud of witnesses. So since we are accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily hinder us. That's what beset me. And let us run with patience, which we just saw in James 1, the race that is set before us. See, I'm running to my destiny. I'm running to reach my maturity. I want to be perfect, which is mature, entire, holy, holy. Not holy one minute and filthy the next. W-H-O-L-L-Y, H-O-L-Y, holy, holy. And how am I going to look? I'm looking unto Jesus, keeping my mind stayed on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher. He brought you in as a newborn baby, and he the one going to mature you if you keep your eyes. Ain't this good? Woo, go to shout, go to go, go to the floor, go around. We use, we're using that fruit of the spirit, that chickens to control ourselves. Because I'm telling you, I love the word of God. God is good in his spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus. Don't be looking at all them people doing all that stuff and they flesh. You don't want to flesh nothing. Hallelujah. The author and the finisher of our faith. Now look at him. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Who was the joy set before him? Us. Us. Despite the shame and it set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He finished what he came to do. Let us run the same race with patience. Amen. Because that race is set before us. The race to maturity the sons of God. And the whole earth is groaning, waiting on us. My God, and we too busy. Oh Lord, I don't want to get off. Verse three, for consider him, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your mind. Don't let the, the evil men fret not thyself because of evil men. Don't fret yourself because of evil men. And when I say evil men, I ain't just talking about the world. Oh, we talking about Lord have mercy. Those that say, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, keep your mind stayed on Jesus. We're going to do this one. The mature person is moved only, only by the word of God and not the capacity of man to offend and revile. Man has a great capacity. I'm talking about not just the world again to offend and revile. In Matthew 24, as it says, and then, because the world we're living in right today, we're living in the end times, and Matthew 24 talks about the end times. Many shall be offended and shall betray one another and hate 
one another. That's going on right now in the world. How do you handle it? If you're mature, you're going to handle it with those fruit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Long-suffering is the ability to put up with. Oh, love have mercy. All I can say is thank you, Lord, for being or that fruit being ordained to remain. And then gentleness. Are you going to be harsh or gentle? Goodness, faith, meekness, and self control. Matthew 5, Jesus gives us some instructions. He said, you're blessed. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, he said, and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So now, unless you're mature, you may be saying, well, oh, they heard me, they remind persons, they said all kinds of stuff. Even, that's because you're not mature. But this is your destiny. <laughs> In your, your destiny as a mature Christian, when men revile you and persecute you and say all men are evil against you falsely, for my sake, he, the mature Christian just rejoices and are exceeding glad for they know that their reward in heaven is great. They persecuted the prophets the same way. Amen. John 16, one through three, Jesus told us what was going to happen. He said these things, let's go there. John 16, one through three. John 16, one through three. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah, looking at your destiny, looking at your future. All this going to happen. All the offenses, all the tests, all the trials, all the uh, everything, persecutions. The key is what you're going to do with it. If you're mature, and, and you will, just keep on coming to church. Keep on getting that word of God. Hallelujah. Look at uh, John 16. These things, Jesus said in John 16, 1, have I spoken unto you that you should not be what? Offended. They're going to try you. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yeah, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he does God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. You know, we're talking about the, the, the Christians out there bad mouthing each other. And Jesus said, I already told you, they're going to think they're doing God's service by putting you out of the synagogues. Amen. Speaking evil again. So get ready for it. He said, I've written this so you won't be offended. Amen. So the mature person remembers the Lord's words. When Jesus said, the servant is not greater than his Lord. He's not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Now, you know you're in good company. And, and, and uh, when you're mature, that's what you think of when people come at you. You know they're going to persecute you because they persecuted Jesus. He told us that. And then he told, gave us some instructions. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. All of those, the, Matthew 5, 44 can only be done if the fruit is working in you. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, yeah. gentleness, goodness, faith, yeah. meekness, and self-control. I'm going to come off the PowerPoint now and finish it up. And we thank God for this yeah. word of God, the mature Christian. This is your destiny that you are looking at. This is going to be on... Uh, uh, YouTube here in a few hours to get that. You should also go back and look at all the videos on the growth and development, starting with the child, excuse me, starting with the, the new baby, the child, the young man, excuse me, the carnal Christian, the young man, and then the mature Christian. The mature Christian, again, is two parts. So we'll go next week to the um, uh, last part, part two of the mature Christian and see what they do when they are reviled and offended 
and persecuted and how the mature Christian, which is your destiny, how you act. So we praise God for his word. We thank him for revealing to us our destiny. He said, you have not chosen me. This is Jesus speaking these words. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and have ordained that you should bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And no matter what, I am the author and the finish of your faith. Jesus said he started this with you as a newborn baby. He's taking you through all the steps, through the process of sanctification, the Holy Spirit. He's taking us from glory to glory until we get to the point to where we glorify our God. We, we reflect the image and the likeness of our creator. And that is a wonderful future. And it's not that far off. It just depends on how much you submit yourself to your own destiny. <laughs> Hallelujah. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. But there's three things you got to overcome. The devil, the world, and the flesh. Amen. I'm going to stop the recording now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.